Hello everyone, I'm making this small video to show you today how easy it is to scrape data from the internet using Python. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with scraping, but scraping is the process of automatically extracting data from the internet from virtually any site. Uh, we can use scraping for news extraction, for example, or stock prices, or uh, sports results, and you can imagine uh, any use cases you want. For example, if you're a fashion retailer, you may you want to use scraping to uh, analyze the competitors, to extract their prices, their product description, uh, and also to mine their social media to know what your customers may think about them. And, uh, for example, if you're uh, an investor, you may want to uh, analyze, analyze the stock prices and collect them and maybe build predictive models. Um, I personally have used scraping in the past for various clients in multiple sectors. And I also use the, this, this, these techniques to collect data for uh, model machine learning model training. Uh, for example, I have extracted images uh, texts and uh, videos to train uh, classification models. So today I'm going to show you guys how you can use uh, libraries such as uh, requests, beautiful soup and pandas to uh, collect and harvest data from a website. We will be interested in uh, this website, Premium Beauty News, and uh, we will analyze a section of the website which corresponds to the market and the trends in this sector. So basically, if you look at this website, we have a grid of articles that appears at the front page. And if we scroll to the bottom, we will have a pagination. What we want here is to collect, automatically collect this data by going through each article, grabbing the URL and entering each one of them extracting the title, the uh, date, maybe the abstract and the full content. We want to do this automatically by paginating over all the pages and then dumping the results into a CSV file or JSON file. Uh, we will see how this can be done. Uh, you'll see that's fairly easy. And in general, guys, if you start doing scraping, you will see that's a lot of fun. And you'll see also that uh, once you can turn every page into structured data, at the end, the internet becomes your full database. So uh, before starting to code, I should mention that we will be using three main libraries. First of all, we'll be using requests, which is uh, a Python layer library to simulate HTTP requests like POST and GET. Uh, we will also use Beautiful Soup, which is an HTML and XML parser. And finally, we will use Pandas to structure all the data and dump it inside data frames and export them into JSON file or a CSV file, for example. Okay, so now we should get started. I'm gonna use Jupyter Notebook to make uh, this process interactive and so that you can follow along with me. And at the end, you will see how we can turn this Jupyter Notebook to uh, Python script in order to schedule uh, the escaping process over time, over weeks, over uh, days, wherever you want, to make the process of data scraping more uh, automatable. So let's get started. Um, I'm gonna fire a Jupyter notebook, that's where I have done already, and I'm gonna import the libraries I want. So I start by request, then I'll import Beautiful soup. And finally, I will import pandas. Now I will define a function that, given a URL, return the soup, beautiful soup representation of uh, the the, the, the XML and HTML content. We will see how this can be done easily. So once we have a new URL, I can generate a response, which is the requests get URL. And then I can get the content of the response by this attribute. And finally, I can parse it. So parse the response. 
which is beautiful soup. Okay, contents. And I have to pass the LXML argument. Um, maybe I should mention that to make this work, you have to also install the LXML package by running this command. Actually, this command is already uh, done, so I'm going to skip it. And then I have to return the parsed response. Okay, now let's see what uh, the result looks like. If I get the URL and pass to the function, we'll see that we'll have this object. Actually, it looks like a string, but it's not. It's a soup object. It's a BS4 beautiful soup object. And basically, it's a tree. Each element of this tree is a node. And the beauty uh, with beautiful soup is that we can uh, query all the objects of this tree by uh, basically two methods, find or find all. For example, if I want to find all the div tags inside uh, this tree, I just call find div. This find method is basically uh, meant to return one single element, basically the first one. And if we call find all, we will just return all the divs inside this tree. So we will return this recursively uh, at the different level of the structure of the tree. So if I compute the length of this list, we will most probably have a large number. All right. Now, if I want to look for a specific uh, object based on his attribute, I can do it. For example, if I want to grab the div all the divs who has who have the class C precon I just do it like this, which is fairly easy. Okay. So now uh, let's look at the structure, the HTML structure of our website in order to make uh, our scraper, our first scraper. So uh, if you look at this first page, what I want here is to collect the information about each element appearing in this grid. So basically the first thing I have to do here is to inspect the source code page, code source page. And uh, if you're using a Mac, uh, you can do this by pressing command option and I at the same time and uh, you will see the element of your uh, source code of your page. So now I can hover uh, over each element and I can see the source code. And if I go uh, through this uh, code, I will see that all these elements appear, all my posts appear in a section that has the class content. So I can extract this section by calling soup find section that has the class content. So here it is. And now I want inside this section to get each post. So basically Okay, each post has is a div that has this class. This looks like a bootstrap uh, naming convention. So we just use it. Post is equals SQL section find all div class equal this. So normally I should have 10 posts, which is good. Okay, now let's take the first post and see how we can extract its URL. 
So basically each post is like this. What I'm interested in here is this URL. This is not a complete URL. We have to append it to the base URL of this uh, of the website. It should correspond actually to this URL. Okay, this looks good. So we can do this. Uh, to make this things more uh, generic, let's loop for each post inside posts. And then we will grab the URI, which is post. And if you look at the code here, we will see that the href is inside an A, which is in, inside the H4, which is actually the title of my post. So I can do this very easily by calling find h4 and then inside h4 I will call find a and then I will grab the href here. So basically I can do this all over all the posts. I can print the URI at each time and it looks good. Okay, now I want to append the base URL to each URI. Yes, so URL post is equal to base URL plus URI, and then I just call URL post. Yeah, now we're good. Okay, so now we have done this for one page only, and what I want to do is paginate over all the pages until I reach the end. So we can do this uh, by inspecting the next button which is in our source page. So if you look at the next button we will see that it's inside a P class there is a span that holds the class equal next and normally if we go through the end for example the page number 81 we will see that we won't have the next button actually the next button exists but it's disabled and if we look at the code we will see that inside class pagination there is no class equal next there is however next disabled all right so how I can how can we implement this logic? So basically what I want to do to paginate over all the data is creating a while loop. So I can do this by so my my URL is equal to this value. And then I want to extract the next button actually the next button is I'm gonna just put soup here soup find p and then I will look at the it's equal pagination all right okay so next button then I will get the span class equal next find span class equal next okay So here's my while loop. While next button is not none, I extract my posts and the section of my current URL. Okay. And then for each post, I extract the post URL. 
Okay, now, once I finish for the first uh, page, I have to iterate and change the URL so that I can go to the next page. Okay, so... Yes, actually I have to... Yeah, actually I have to define the soup URL here. Okay. Yeah, maybe the next button I will initialize to to something like this, like an empty string. Okay, and then define soup and then section posts and so on. And now I have to um, change the value of uh, URL by updating it to the next value using the pagination. So, so yeah, the next button we have seen it is uh, okay. Next button equal soup uh, find b class pagination and then okay and then get the span class equal next find span class equal next okay so if next button is not none, I can just modify my URL by getting it from the span. So next button find a href. This is a relative URI. I can just check it from here. Okay, so I just have to get the base URL. So actually this is my base URL. Yeah, there is a slash. Okay, so I'm gonna get... Okay. Okay. Which is good. So, base URL plus this one. Okay, now we can update our button, our next uh, next uh, URL here. Okay, we can try this by printing each time the page number. We we'll start at one. page number okay we increment it and finally uh, is not none okay yeah I won't print the URL posts, but you get the logic. Normally, this uh, loop should stop at the page number 81. So I'm gonna pause the video until I reach the end. Yeah, uh, here we are. Okay. So now the uh, loop has uh, finally ended. So we can we have looped over all the pages. So what we want now is um, for each post in each page we want to grab the content. So I'm gonna just close this. Okay, let's say for example I want this first article. 
based on his URL, I want to grab the data, the title, the date, uh, the abstract, and the full content. And if I have additional data like tags, for example, or uh, the author name, I should get them as well. So let's see how to do this. So basically, back to the code, get the post URL. So I just create soup post, which is parse URL of the URL post, soup post. OK. Now what I want is to grab the title of this article. I see from the code here that it's an h1 with the class equal to article name. So basically I just get it title equal find um, h2, I guess. No, it's it, h1. Class equal article title. Yeah. Okay. So I want to get the title text. Okay. Now I want uh, the date time. So let's see. Okay. The date time appears inside a span inside a call md7 inside a row subheader. So I will get the uh, the this header first. Sub find header that has the class row subheader and I will get the span and the date time attribute. Okay. So yeah. Yeah, okay. This is a row subheader. Header, row, subheader. Yeah, actually it's soup post. Okay, so I will get this span and then I will get the date time attribute. Okay, good. Now I will I want to extract the abstract. If I look again at the code, I will see that the abstract is in a bold font. It's inside the H2 that has a class article intro. So the abstract is inside H2 that has this class. Yeah, I'm gonna just grab the text. And now we're done. Finally, what we want now is to get the full content of the text. Actually, there is a div. That has this class. Okay, there are a lot of sub uh, tags inside this div, but we can do this. We can wrap, get all the text and concatenate it automatically by calling the text attribute, which is quite handy in our situation. Okay, so as you see here, we have collected and extracted all the data we need. Now, 
why why don't we create a function we can easily do it uh, extract post data so basically when I want to do this I need a post uh, URL and then once I have the post URL I can just create a soup post which is this one parse URL post URL and then I will extract all this information from here I'm gonna just get it and paste it just right here okay now I can put all this information inside the a dictionary so title is equal to title date time is equal to date time abstract is equal to abstract and content is equal to content as well I will add also the post URL okay and then I return the data yes missing comma okay so now I can call this function inside my loop but let me define it here okay I can define posts data here and then I can collect my data for each post here extract post data and I just call it post URL post URL and I will append it to post data yeah I want to monitor the progress of my execution so I will just import TQDM okay I will wrap it on posts and put leave equal all false and this should be good I mean just yeah so now the code is executing for the first few pages I will interrupt the execution at the 10th page to see uh, how uh, the results uh, are structured if we got it right hopefully so now we're going through the 7th the 8th 9th and finally the 10th okay so now if you have scraped 10 pages with 10 posts each we will probably have 100 posts yeah okay with the offset we have uh, uh, 90 and if I put this inside the data frame okay so it's post data we will have this data frame and I can check the unique number of URL which is 90 okay so now we have you've, you've seen that we have uh, collected all this information uh, very easily now uh, to make our code generic and uh, to make it executable and uh, uh, automatable 
using scheduling and clone jobs and so on, we have to pass it inside the script. And for this, I'm going to just uh, use Visual Studio Code. All right. So I'm going to save this inside. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Scraping. That's why. I will get all my dependencies. I just replace TQDM by TQDM because we are inside the script. I will define the parse URL function. The so I'm going to select an interpreter. Okay. Uh, which one? Okay. Just change the formatter. I'm going to use Python. Nice Python. Okay, looks good. Now I will do this here. Okay, just replace TQDM. And define base URL. That's it. So we've seen here that uh, with a little bit of uh, HTML knowledge and a little bit of uh, uh, Python programming knowledge uh, using uh, uh, beautiful soup and requests, we can easily harvest and extract the content of a full website. And uh, most likely we can uh, replicate our analysis and our code on any other section of the website because I honestly think that all these uh, sections follow the same structure. So uh, you can get all the job done within uh, maybe a few minutes of execution. And finally, you can run your analysis on this scraped data. Uh, yeah, so I will post all the code uh, in my GitHub account. And uh, I will post the links to, to Beautiful Soup, Requests and Pandas in the comment section. Uh, if you guys have any question regarding the code or the analysis, uh, don't hesitate to post a comment uh, below and don't hesitate to share and uh, also uh, to like this video. Uh, so thank you for watching. Bye-bye.